All right, Celtics hang on for a 110-106 win over the Miami Heat. Tom Giles. Brian Scalabrini, Eddie House with you here. And uh, it got tight there at the end, but the, the Celtics able to make uh, just enough plays and, and hang on for the win, Scalabrini. And give, that shot was huge. That was a moment where it, I don't know how the Celtics were going to find their offense, but Jalen Brown, who missed the three right before that, had a little hitch in his shot. That was his pure, that was pure nylon on the net, and it gave the Miami Heat crowd or maybe the players, like, you guys got to quit talking as I, you know, pretty much – I'm not saying that sealed the deal, but as close to sealing the deal as he could have done it. I mean, come on, Porzingis again. Another fantastic night from Porzingis. Jason Tatum, phenomenal. Uh, Drew Holiday stepping up, doing what he does. Uh, and and Jalen Brown being making that big shot. I, I thought this. It got a little chippy and a little dirty right there, right? Well, it was a little funky. It wasn't dirty. I wouldn't say dirty. But what I mean is it got a little chippy, and it's the it's a rivalry. It's a real rivalry. And each all of those players know that. And to me, I like the fact that once that happened, they started to attack Duncan Robinson. They went after him a, a, a couple times in a couple possessions. This is the thing I like. I mean, that's NBA basketball. Come on, man. If you don't like that, I mean, I, we got to check your post, man. I mean, this is what it's about, really, to be honest with you. This is exactly what... It, it, this, this was a playoff brand type basketball. Even though all those guys went out, this is what I like seeing. This is the type of Celtics team. When I talk about toughness, as one of my key, we show toughness tonight. Yeah, it, I mean, it, I thought it was almost the turning point of the game, right? The Celtics were up by nine at the time where Jalen Brown and Duncan Robinson get tangled up. Jalen throws Duncan Robinson to the floor, gets the flagrant foul. Uh, but, Scal, what did you think of the play in the moment? I thought that was shady, but... <laughs> You know, shady. like, because it's three seconds after the whistle. You know, I thought it was shady, but I, you know, like, if he felt like, if he felt like uh, Duncan Robinson was grabbing him, I get it. But I just thought, like, that that was, I thought it was a low down move. So, um, Miami, <laughs> Miami responded, and then eventually the Celtics responded. But I just thought that was a low down move. I, I don't think Jalen is a dirty player, no. but at the same time, you know when. When you in, in in the heat of battle, things are happening, and you feel a certain way, and you feel like teams have been getting away with being a little extra at times, then when you do yours, it might look like dirty, but at the same time, man, you got to stand your ground. And and then what about when Duncan Robinson came when he was talking to the right, right there? This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, I like all that right there. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That's that's good basketball right there. No, I, I that's, agree. That's, that's real. That's real basketball right there. We we shouldn't all be friends. Let, let's get that clear. I don't know you. You don't know me. I ain't never kicked it with you. We ain't went out to eat. I don't know who your mama, what your mama name is. We ain't got to be partners. We don't have to be. We can respect each other out on the court, but we don't have to be, hey, man, you know, I'm going to pick you up when you fall down. And you know what? My bad for the foul upside your head. No, nah, no, nah, we ain't doing none of that. No, no, no. It ain't happening like that. I, I'm cool with what happened tonight. I, I like how everything went. And it's, it's building for both franchises. It's building for both teams. I think Miami's going to learn from this. The Celtics are going to learn from this. From moving forward, I would like that type of attitude for everybody we play. Not just the Heat, whoever it is. I don't care if it's the Wizards. I don't care if it's the Utah Jazz. We got to come in with that mindset like, hey, man, I don't know who you are. I don't know you. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. You know, I, I have nothing that I, I feel for you. And we come in here to stop you out. We're going to put our foot on your throat, and we're going to make sure that we uh, actually, when we crush it, we're going to cut a little pivot on that, too. We're going to spin on it on our way out. All right, Eddie, I got to ask you a question. This is, and this is why I'm a little bit apprehensive about wanting to see this again. We're done with Miami, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure we're yeah. done with Miami. Okay. All right. Do you, Eddie, do you think that now that Jalen Brown did that to Duncan Robinson, and I'm sure we're going to get all the sound and we're going to hear what people have to say about it, and it's going to be a controversial topic, and this, that throw to the ground is going to be brought up over and over again. Here's what I worry about. Do you, Miami, do you feel like they could be a team that would target Jalen Brown and try to go the extra and try to hurt him based off of that play? And that's why I'm worried about what that play means moving forward. 
No, I, I don't think that. I, I don't think that it, it's something they don't have. Uh, again, remember when I was, we was talking about like, uh, you know, it's certain type of players that you might will have to watch out for that will come clean your clock. And especially, I don't think Jalen Brown's, his history doesn't say that he's that type of player. You know, that was in, in the heat of the moment. Everybody clashed and they did what they did and they, they went their separate ways and finished playing the game. But I don't think that it, it's something that where it's warranted that. And, and in it, in this day and age of basketball, I don't think we have guys out there that are really, you know, the, the last of the Mohicans might have been Unitas Haslam. You know, shout out to my partner UD. He might have been somebody that came in there and went to go clean somebody's clock, you know, when something like that happened. But I don't think that they have that out there. I, I, and, and, and also, it all depends on who did it. And Jalen Brown's not a guy who has a track record of being a dirty player. So it's just something that happened. I don't think that that is, it, it will be a residual effect from that. Yeah, I, it just feel he it felt like Jalen Brown got frustrated in the moment because you know you got Duncan Robinson. Oh, yeah, he's, you're talking about he's NBA just, teams that you're looking like Eric Spoelstra knows that the Celtics are way better than the Heat. So I, I, Pat Riley knows that the Celtics are way better than the Heat. So is they, are they going to use that as a rallying cry to say like, hey, they did one of us, we got to do one of them? That's no, no, all I don't, I'm I don't, say, that's they, all I'm saying. Yeah, Scout, I, you know, being in, in, in that organization for, for four years of my career, th that's not what's preached. Now, toughness is preached. You know, being tough, standing your ground, being who you are, but not being dirty. I, it, it, I don't think that – and it, that would be a – That's crazy. That would be a Wait, hold role. up. Hold up. D-Wade did that to Rondo and took his elbow and snapped it backwards. So you can't say he, that. He did do that. He did, but that was, but that, was, that, that was low down. He went after Rondo. But it, yeah, but it, it, and, and, and you know, I, I'm Rondo, my partner. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that that was cool. That wasn't cool, but D Wade doesn't have a, a track record of being dirty. Like, and I don't think he, like, per se said, this is how I'm going to hurt that guy. I think it just happened within the realm of the game. And don't get it twisted. It, it can happen either side. Either side could do the same thing. In the realm of the game, if you're able to do it, you know, those things happen. We know that, Scal. And so I'm, I'm, I don't think that it will be a target thing where you're like, hey, we about to go out here. We got to go make sure that we hurt this guy. I, I'm not going to subscribe to that. Okay. But now within the course of the game, if somebody say, hey, let him beat you baseline so he think he got a free layup and I'm going to go ahead and tear his head off, yeah, that might happen. You know what I mean? And that might happen for each either side. You know, that's just how it goes. But I don't think somebody's going to say from the beginning of the game, like, hey, man, you know what? I'm going to go out here and I'm going to slide my foot under him while he's shooting his jumper and make him roll his ankle. Or, okay. you know, I, I don't that's, think it's going to go like that. I'm, I, I mean, do think I, that within the course of the game, yeah. it could happen. I'm, you feel I'm, me? I am worried that if we play the Miami Heat in the playoffs, that they're going to target Jalen Brown. And I know, like, I don't know what like, I, I, I – But how would they target How would they target him? What you mean? How would, how would oh you target God. that? Oh, my God. Slide you your foot that? underneath him. Guy drives baseline. Like what I just said. You swipe down on the ball. You rip. Like, there's – I mean, there's a lot of ways you can target a guy and get him hurt. There, there's playing, and then there's – I'm going to foul to hurt. That's Scott, I just wanted everybody to know – I just wanted everybody to know exactly how things can happen. That's why I asked you that. Yeah. I know how you could do it. I yeah. want you to explain to everybody. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, like guy goes up to a shot, you slide your foot underneath him, right? Uh, guy's on a fast break layup. You, it's, when he goes down to swipe, you swipe down and you hit him really hard while he's going up. Boom, shoulder goes out. Guy goes to the basket. You, uh, you know, you hip check him as he's running through the lane, just, you know, trying to get through a screen. All those things. That's yep. it. Go ahead. All right. Do I, your, I just do your job. <laughs> no, I, I'm letting you guys cook right now. That's what I'm doing. No, but oh I'm telling God. you. I'm telling you, like, we're going to show that play. They're going to show that play. And when we give, if, if we match up with them, like, that's going to be their rallying cry right there because of the way that they responded in this game. They're going to say, oh, look at this play. They might even show the Terry Rozier play and be like, oh, these guys are trying to hurt you. Whatever you got to do to motivate, that's what I think they're going to do. So, I don't want to play they the Heat now. They will do that. I don't want to play the Heat now. Well, I mean, yeah. They Without Jimmy that. Butler, they were right there. Without Terry Rozier for I'm for not worried about any of that. I don't want to play the Heat to all the shenanigans. Okay. Before, I'm not worried about the Heat. Now I'm worried about the Heat. All right. Go ahead. We're going to set it back down to Miami. Uh, Abby Chin with uh, Al Horford. Al, this is Miami's rivalry. Doesn't matter what the records are. Tensions were high. How did you guys close this game out? 
Yeah, definitely got, you know, tens there. Uh, once, you know, JB had that flagrant foul, I feel like I got him going, and uh, we just stuck with it, uh, found a way, but it's, it's good to get a win on the road. How much do you like to see that fire out of JB? Uh, it's great. Um, you know, we need him to, you know, to be aggressive, to be himself, and, uh, um, you know, that is slow him down. This game, and the way that it played out, Joe tells us all the time that he likes you guys to be in tight situations. It felt like the postseason. Do you agree with that? Are these situations helpful? It, it is good. I mean, not ideal. You know, uh, we'd rather kind of just handle our business and, and build the lead. But yeah, you know, sometimes that's the way it is. And for our group, it's good for us to experience this. We keep saying it, these are the dog days. But what do you like best about the way you guys keep stacking up wins? Uh, we're, just, we're just staying committed to to playing Celtic basketball. You know, we're, we're out there trying to defend the right way, um, uh, execute our offense, and just continue to play our style of play. You got a pick in the Super Bowl tonight? Man, uh, Chiefs, why not? <laughs> yeah, I can't bet against them. <laughs> Al, thank you. I said the same thing. Thank okay, you. Al. All right, thank you, Abby. Uh, again, Celtics with the win, 110 to 106, their 41st win of the year, 41 and 12 now.